Hi everyone, Rose Webster here. A lot to tell you this week. On December 3rd, a panel that advises the FDA actually voted against universal testing of blood donations for the Zika virus. And uh, here's a snippet of that. According to Dr. Bush, and I looked up Dr. Bush on University of California San Francisco website, nothing came up for Bush, B-U-S-H, as in this post. Although there's another Dr. Bush, but it's spelled differently. So I don't know if it's the same person. But anyway, his point was it's likely not infectious. There's that word likely again. Uh, to others, once donors develop Zika virus neutralizing antibodies. Well, <laughs> I was aghast at this because um, a lot of people don't know this, but over half a million um, blood donations tested positive on the COBA Zika test last year, over a year ago. And Dr. J. Epstein, Office of Blood Research and Review Director at the FDA, said in a statement, Zika virus is a transfusion transmitted disease which can cause potentially severe consequences, including microcephaly and Guillain-Barre syndrome. The requirement to test blood donations for Zika virus has already resulted in interdicting contaminated co collections, confirming the value of testing. So, uh, <laughs> I can't believe that there would be, I think it was a vote of nine to one or something like that. I can't believe you can put that many human beings together to vote against testing the blood supply for Zika. We don't have a cure for this. Uh, the best uh, we have right now, I feel, is azithromycin because I think if the worst manifestations are Zika working in tandem with Wolbachia. As you know, if you read or look at my other um, PSAs. So moving right along, that was a, a very disturbing finding. Now, I want to draw so some, something to your attention. That West Nile virus shares the same phylogenetic clad with Zika with over 97% nodal support. And this could be very relevant. West Nile virus, biology transmission and human infection by Cole Pitts et al. Here's two sentences. And this is something that I suspect is going to be used to misinform the public. But the truth is that immature or partially mature flavivirus particles of both dengue and West Nile virus have been shown to account for up to as much as 40% of the total virus population in a given infection. While they were traditionally thought to be non-infectious, and that's what I'm thinking Dr. Bush is relying on, old data, old thinking, whoever Dr. Bush is, several recent studies have shown that immature West Nile virus particles can be highly immunogenic and infectious in vitro and in vivo when bound by antibodies against the E or PRM protein. And uh, I'm not making it up. Look this up for yourself. Now, I've drawn my own clad, which I'm sure you've seen, but I thought I'd use Dr. Fiona Hunter's clad, which shows the placement of West Nile virus, St. Louis encephalitis virus, Zika virus, dengue virus. So, West Nile and dengue virus. Immature particles of those can cause 40% of infections. What are the chances Zika does too? And they don't even w consider wanting to screen for Zika. Now this this here is my clad as you can see related more to the whales because whales have a very similar body temperature to humans. In fact they're very much like us reproductively, uh, life, um, life longevity, uh, even they go into menopause, some of them. So it, it's really interesting when you look at the comparisons. We're very much like whales. And uh, whales have suffered West Nile virus and St. Louis encephalitis virus. So Zika does seem likely. And uh, I've said this many times on posts that over 28,000 cases of Zika were reported in Puerto Rico. And that was last year. Many waters surrounding the Caribbean are obviously teeming with Zika and black infected Aedes and Culex, mosquito eggs and larvae. And um, here's the disturbing thought I had about what the public doesn't know about Zika. And 80% of people will not show symptoms. 
but the presence of a virus facilitates the invasion of Wolbachia. And that's a Strobe and Tess show, uh, 2015 um, source. Uh, so is Wolbachia then, once the Zika virus is established in vertebrates, whales, people, is it then like pouring gasoline on a fire? It's quite interesting because there was a study that showed the virus showed up in urine, ten, it was different than the virus that showed up in semen in, in men. And that was in my previous uh, PSAs and also in my most, one of my most recent articles. So here's the point. Culex tarsalis in Mexico, wild caught, were determined to be Zika vectors. Culex quinquefasciatus were also uh, determined to be Zika vectors. Well, these two types of Culex mosquitoes were better vectors of West Nile virus, as you know, very related to Zika, and malaria when they naturally acquired Wolbachia. Now, how are they going to do that? Well, when birds, bats, die, uh, any other warm-blooded creatures that that um, mosquitoes can feed off of. So I want to draw your attention to something that I found very disturbing way back February 23rd, 2016. The CDC was investigating possibly sex, possible cases of sexually transmitted Zika virus. And the thing is, here's the thing, we're always told pregnant women have to worry. Well, what is it? Is it that once pre women get pregnant, they no longer have sex? Because a man can have this virus in his semen for more than six months. So to me, it seemed crazy to tell women, don't go here, don't go there, and but say nothing to the men. That seemed insane to me. Uh, and here's a couple sentences from that post. Officials have not said which states they are working with or where these women live because the risk applies to all women. And that was... Uh, you know, according to Jennifer McQuiston, Deputy Incident Manager for Zika Virus at the CDC. And she added, we've been a little surprised at the number of suspected cases we've received. Well, there was a study out of Barranquilla, Colombia, that showed that 47% of cases were attributed to sexual transmission. So, <laughs> in the U.S., they're saying 3%, and we've got 47% somewhere else. So it's somewhere in there between that range and I, I'm guessing it's closer to 47 percent. Now here's something the public doesn't know is my own data. I have a uh, a article devoted to Zika in men and what it does. It drops the testosterone levels, could cause infertility and uh, I decided to keep an eye on the organic visits. I don't even promote this article because I wanted to see who looks up things to try and figure out what to do if they have these symptoms. So early on, uh, uh, Quezon City, Los Angeles, Atlanta, uh, Toronto was ninth on the list. Uh, the top 20 were here. The other cities listed didn't have like any, um, n like any big numbers attached to them. So I cut it off at 20. And then uh, August 13th, this was early. The first chart at the bottom here is early in 2017. And then August 13, 2017, I looked again a few months later, and the, the cities I circled in red were kind of the ones that moved up in the top 20. And I added the top 30 because more cities were listed, so I realized this has moved. At the time, I didn't know where Kazan City even was, and I'll show you, I'll tell you more about that. This last chart, this was between August 13th and October 27th, 2017. And all the places in red are pretty well the newest that have moved up into the top 30. And we've got New York, we've got the UK, Boston, and a bunch of places in Canada. Now, I'm Canadian, so some of these Canadian visits could be because people know I'm Canadian and maybe they know me and <laughs> maybe they're looking at my stuff. So, uh, but the disturbing thing is Toronto's always been like between 9 and number 16, at least for my from my perspective, but New York has moved way up to number three. Kazon City, okay, the Kazon City's always been at the top. The very number one that says not set is because people have set their uh, computers to not record their location. So I don't really have an idea there, but Kazon City has always been number two, which is the top that I know of. Well, it turns out Kazon City, Metro Manila, has the highest homeless population in the world. 
and that includes 1.2 million children. So that points to overnight Kulix causing the most devastating infections in men at least based on organic visits, not something I can control. Now, <laughs> we've seen some crazy headlines like uh, endangered species don't need to be saved, extinction is part of um, nature's way or the planet's normal cycles. Well, it's not when some groups of people have decided to put Wolbachia into a species that never had it in the first place because we have certain species of copods and birds and insectivores that feed preferentially off the 80s genus. So I found this headline, I thought this was hilarious, Entanglements Hamper Reproduction as Right Whale Population Slides. <laughs> Entanglements. I've even seen air pollution causes infertility. <laughs> you know what? Wolbachia is a reproductive parasite. That's your more likely uh, cofactor here. And, and coupled with encephalitis viruses. So, um, again, the pathologist report stated in a couple places, an infectious disease cannot be ruled out, but is unlikely. Well, unlikely sounds like a cop-out. Would we say that to a woman that might be pregnant? Can't be ruled out, but is unlikely and walk away. We can test for this. Now, a friend of mine had once said to me, Gee, you know, nobody has an idea what Wolbachia does. We need to have a visual. And I had written this, this article about testing North Atlantic right whales. And, and Wolbachia is like Jekyll and Hyde, okay? Wolbachia and mitochondria are maternally transmitted and subsequently can be co-inherited by the offspring. offspring. Uh, previous studies document the role of Wolbachia in driving dramatic changes in host populations. An excessive in infection intensity may result in pathology, resulting in negative effects upon host fitness, which really means host survival. So what's happening to these whales could very well happen to humans, and especially men. Men will be more susceptible because Wolbachia likes to reside in reproductive tissues, and the testes are generally cooler uh, temperature-wise than the ovaries. And there was a thought that um, there was an argument that mammals were too warm to be hospitable to Wolbachia, but that's false. That's actually false. Now, here's the analogy. There was a Streptococcus A outbreak in London, and I decided to, to snip four sentences out of it, because what I'm hearing is I've been trolled a lot, and I've had people say, oh, it's in 70% of insects, and humans have been exposed to it for thousands of years. Well, here's the deal. It's not normally found in humans, fish, birds, uh, certain aqu most aquatic species, uh, any vertebrates for that matter. But here's the deal. When you think of group A strep, it's a common bacteria that lives in the back of people's noses and, and uh, their mouths or on skin wounds. And many of us even have it on our skin or in our bodies and don't even know it. Some of the times it makes us sick, and it's often in the form of strep throat. It's relatively mild. You've probably had or heard of strep throat. However, there is a group A that can go deeper into the body, including the bloodstream, muscles, and joints, and cause life-threatening infections like flesh-eating disease. And this is where they amputate. And so this is the analogy between strep A and Wolbachia. Sure, we might have had a little bit of exposure over thousands of years, but you put trillions of Wolbachia infected 80s into the environment, you are, you are causing excessive um, exposure to something that will be pathogenic. And in order for its survival, it, it will um, practically kill its host. And I hate to say that, but that's kind of what's happening to these whales, and most of them are male. I think it's um, at two to three, or I think it's, gee, I can't remember now, but most of them are male. So um, this is very disturbing stuff. So <laughs> uh, I want to end up with today. Today there was a post on CBC, and, and luckily they didn't disable my comments, so it was nice. And here's a few snippets. Transport Canada declined an interview for the story. 
and uh, they're still waiting for the completion of some report on how Joe Howlett died. Well, how he died, he did two masterful cuts and the whale was free. I don't know how you improve on two masterful cuts. Do you try to get it down to one masterful cut? Because there's nothing wrong with his technique. It was a freak accident. It's highly unfortunate. But this, again, smells like a cop-out to me. It also smells like they're waiting for these dead whales to get entangled in something because they're almost like dead leaves caught in a sewer grade once they become ill with encephalitis viruses and Wolbachia. Uh, they'll be floating around their dead. For every one that washes up on shore, four or five are floating out to sea. So that's skewing public perception because then you hear about it, you think, oh, it's entangled again. Well, they could have been very ill easily before that happened. Now, Eileen Kinley on CBC and Ken Norton and there's somebody else, Richard Tate, I think. I could have that last name wrong. They like to take stabs at me. And it's really disrespectful because all I'm trying to do is save these whales. And out of uh, respect for Joe Howlett's memory, I'm not making a dime off this. I'm just trying to open people's eyes to the possibility that we need to test for other things here. And my theory fits on a multiple species levels. It fits with the Adelie penguins, Arctic terns that died. Uh, rosate terns are crashing, even though their uh, breeding areas are well protected. Herring. Um, there's another one, steelhead trout. I mentioned that in my last PSA. So here is my response to her. Because... Now, she's saying I'm a conspiracy theorist. Well, if we'll back infected AD release, AZ's releases that are funded by the U.S. government, Bill and Melinda Gates, three other governments, and two family foundations are so safe, just test for it. Have the guts to prove me wrong. Because your constant attempts to downplay what has been willfully ignored makes you look like a shill, which is illegal. And I've cited this many times, the book Immunology, Inflammation and Diseases of the Eye by Perlman and Gentile on page 91 states, Wolbachia well, is most numerous in the mammalian host compared with the insect stage. Elevated Wolbachia well, DNA and even intact Wolbachia well, are detected in the blood. And that's uh, within seven days in the mammalian host, bacterial numbers increase 600 fold. So, you can see why they don't want these whales rescued, because within the first week of them becoming ill, it would be ideal to test for this. And we do have evidence that humans can be infected with Wolbachia without any trace of the nematode worm that emits it. The ignored study, 2015, and I know Eileen Kinley, we shouldn't look beyond 2009 because, oh my God, it changes the data, doesn't it? Well, Bacchus species can infect mammalian cells, even human cells, in vitro. Horizontal transmission in insects and among helminists occurs via cell-to-cell -cell invasion, predation, and cannibalism, among other possibilities. Establishing the potential for horizontal transfer to animals and humans as well. Hence, Wolbachia uh, should be further evaluated as causes of human infection. And I thanked her for helping me get more signatures on my petition, though. So, sadly, there are people in this world that put uh, money ahead of life, human life, or animal life, or endangered species life. What I have to deal with right now is this. Endangered species have more protections legally in place than human beings. Or at least on paper it appears that way. Not that it's happening yet. But that's why I'm fighting so hard for these whales, because I guarantee what's happening to them could happen to humans, and the EPA is going to allow the release of these Wolbachia infected 80s to go from Tennessee up to Maine. And that's going to be right beside New Brunswick, uh, Quebec, and Ontario, and mosquitoes don't care about borders. So thanks again for listening. I'm sorry it was very long, but uh, thanks again. Take care.